In this video, we are going to look into more detail in how the memory works. In particular, we are focusing on how list objects are represented in memory. So let's start a new file and let's call it who am I and how many. That is the name I, ga uh, I gave to this example in the book. And um, for now, let's uh, do it. So what I'm going to do in the following is I will give you one example and I will do the example twice using different data types. And uh, I do that so that you can see a difference. And um, yeah, this is, um, in my opinion, the best way of uh, how you learn the following concept. So let's start with a very simple example. So let's go ahead and uh, create a variable. Let's call it A and assign it the number 42. Okay. So now what happens in memory is the following. As we saw in a previous video, first the right hand side is going to be evaluated. That creates a new object with the number 42. This is of course an integer. And then after the right hand side is done, on the left hand side in the name section in memory, we are going to create a variable called a and we make the variable reference the new object. Okay. So this is nothing new. So let's continue with something we have not seen before. So let's go ahead and assign to a new variable B whatever A is. And to people that are new to programming, this may already be confusing because many people view this as kind of an equation. So they say, okay, B is equal to A. Okay, and they think that this must be the case for all times now, and this is not the case. So in programming, um, when you use the assignment statement, this only assigns the right hand side to the name on the left hand side in this in, in this second, so to say. So later on, A and B may be different um, the objects. However, let's see what happens in, in a computer's memory. So first, the right hand side is evaluated. So we follow uh, on the left hand side, we look up the name A, then we follow the reference to the object here. And then we um, get back as the result, a reference to the 42 object. And then we create a new variable, call it B. And we make that reference the return value, which is the same object. So now this is the first time in this course where we have an example where we have one object that has more than one references going to it. Okay. And now, non-trivially, if I ask Python what is A, it simply tells me, well, it's 42. If I ask Python what is B, it also tells me it's 42. Okay, that is um, almost trivial, I would say. But now let's go ahead and assign to A the number 87. Okay, let's execute this and let's see what happens in memory. So in memory, on the right-hand side, um, the right-hand side is again evaluated first. So this creates a new object with the number 87 in it, also an integer. And um, so, and then what we do is on the left hand side, we're going to follow um, the A uh, or follow all the names here until we find the, na the name A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the reference starting at A and we make A reference the new object. Okay. So now, if, we, that, if that is what is going on in memory, if we now go ahead and ask Python, hey, what is A? It will non-trivially um, tell us it's 87. Okay, it is trivially. And then if we ask B, um, we get back 42. Okay, and that is what I meant when I said that some people that are new to programming may be confused um, by a line like this, like where we set B to whatever A is, but this only regards this moment in time. So um, below here, we see that both A and B refer to different objects. And uh, even though at some point they referred to the same object. Okay, so that is a, um, that is the simple version um, of this example. So maybe let me give that a nice title. Um, let's call it working with quote, simple objects. Okay. So now we are going to do the same example, but we're using a different data type. Okay. So let's correspondingly call this section working with quote, complex objects, whatever that is. 
no definition yet. It's just the same example, the same idea of the example with just a different data type. So let's create a new variable and let's call it x. And um, x is going to be set to um, a list with the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in it. So let's keep that simple. Okay. And let me execute this cell. So whatever what that does is, it is going to create a list object. So now we have to ask ourselves how are list objects represented. Okay, so I will tell you um, how this works. So first, on the right-hand side, Python is going to uh, uh, is going ahead and will create a big object, and I usually draw it like this, and it will put so-called slots in it. So what are slots? Um, these are basically areas that are all of the same size and they can all store um, the same kind of data, the same number of zeros and ones. And then this object is also uh, of a certain data type, namely of the list data type. Okay, And we will see that uh, soon um, in, in the code cell. Okay, so now that is only um, now, so, so far we only have uh, evaluated the brackets, so we only created a list. So now Python will go from left to right inside the list expression here and we'll create the numbers one by one. So first we're going to create the number one. So what that is, is going to be like this, just as before and as above in, in this uh, video. We're going to um, create a new object and put the number one in there and it's also going to be an integer object. And now because this object is going to be inside the list object, well, what we are going to do, we go from the first slot in the list object and we will make a reference go to the one object here. Okay? And then Python will go to the next number, which is the number two, and we'll create um, the number two maybe here. So this is just to illustrate that um, we have no idea where in memory these objects are going to be. And then Python will go ahead and we'll create a reference going here. And then last but not least, Python will create a third object, a third number. And let's say we put it right here. And this is of course also going to be an integer object. And uh, the reference will follow or will go down from here. Okay, so the first thing we learn from this is that um, Python does not store the numbers inside the list really. So the only thing that is ever stored inside the list object are the references, okay? And references are just memory addresses, so big numbers, the ones we saw uh, using the ID function in a previous video. Okay, so now this is the right-hand side, okay? The right-hand side has now um, been evaluated. And now we will go ahead and we will evaluate the left-hand side, which basically simply creates a name X and makes X reference the list, okay? So here on the left-hand side, we are going to create x, and x will reference the list object. Okay, so what I mean when I say we are dealing with a, so to say, complex object, means it is complex because um, we have a reference to an object which, the, which itself contains further references to other objects. And there's nothing that, pre that would prevent us from having other list objects inside the list object that also reference further objects. So we can have a very complex structure here in memory, okay? This is just a one layer structure, so to say, or one level structure. So now in uh, the code cell, let's briefly ask Python, hey, what is the type of X? And it will confirm to us it is list. So um, you could have guessed this before. Um, we haven't, um, we haven't uh, seen this in the uh, other video that introduced the idea of object orientation and data types. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just a data type here. And now let's do the analog of what we did above. So above here, I created a variable called A and I created a second variable B and I made it point to whatever A points to. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. Let's simply call it y and let's assign y to whatever x points to, okay? So in memory, all that does here is the following. It is going to evaluate the right-hand side, which is simply x. So what that means is we follow the x variable to the object and then the return value of the, of the right-hand side is going to be the reference to the beginning of the list object. And this is given back to me. And what, uh, what am I going to do with the reference to the list object? Well, I'm going to assign it to a new variable, let's call it y, 
and make y point here as well. Okay, so what that means is um, when I set y to whatever x uh, to whatever x is, that means um, this does not copy anything in memory. Okay, the only thing that happens in memory is we create a new name, which references an object that already existed before. Okay, so we are not going to copy anything here. And now um, let's uh, briefly um, review what we can do with lists. So first, trivially, x and y are of course both the lists one, two, three. And now, um, as we briefly saw before, um, when we introduced the first example uh, of a Python program in this course, was that we could also index into a list. So let's say I want to index into the x list. I use the indexing operator and in order to obtain the first element we have to index with the number zero. Okay, So we learned that uh, Python is a zero based uh, programming language so when we, whenever we have to count uh, in Python then we start to count at zero and not at one. Okay, So this is just um, the rule. Let's execute that and um, we get back to number one. So if Python sees an expression like this with the indexing operator what happens in memory is as follows. We will go ahead and we um, look up the name x, we follow the reference, and then um, inside these uh, slots we will go into the first slot, the slot number zero. So sometimes uh, what you will see me do is um, we could put um, in a different color this, the index numbers right here. Okay. So, but uh, usually I will leave that away because it's um, usually it's clear um, what the ind indices are. So we are going to follow the first um, index. So in other words, the first reference going to um, this object, the object with the number one, and then a reference, a direct reference um, to uh, the number one object is going to be returned. So let me show that with a red dotted line. Okay, so this is basically um, what we just did here when I evaluated this. So here again in the color red here we see we get back the return value 1 and this is nothing but a reference to the, to the object, to the integer object 1. Okay, so let's do the following. Let's go ahead and change this object. So let's go ahead and assign to the first index in the x list a new number. Let's keep it sim simple. Let's uh, assign to it the number 99. Okay, let's execute this. So this is now the first time we see the assignment statement being used and we don't have a clear uh, an, a name only on the left hand side. We have something other than just a name on the left hand side. So we are assigning to something other than just a name. So we will, uh, um, in a bit, we will see how that works. But now as before, we have to evaluate the right hand side first. And what that means is we simply go ahead and we create a new object with the number 99. This is an integer. And uh, then what is going to happen is, now um, this, the right hand side is evaluated, it's done. So now we have to um, assign the reference to the 99 to whatever is on the left hand side. And as we see here, uh, we are assigning to uh, the zero index in the x list. And what that means is, we go to the x list up here, we follow the x here, go into the first slot, and now because there is already a reference here, what we are going to do is we are going to remove this reference and we will place in there a new reference and we will make this point to the number 99. And now what is going to happen is because the number 1 has no further references, it has a reference count of 0, um, this is going to be garbage collected. Okay, and now let's, uh, go, ba let's go back to the code cells here. And now if I ask you, or if I ask Python, hey, what is x? Well, Python would tell me it's a list with the numbers 99, 2, and 3. Okay. And if I now go ahead and ask Python, hey, what is the y list? Um, this is uh, probably a sort of confusion because um, without, without the memory diagram, many people, especially beginners, would say, well, um, y should still be 1, 2, 3. Okay. Because I only changed x here. I did not touch y here, I only changed x, so why should y change? But if we ask Python what is y, we also get back um, the list 99, 2 and 3. And in the memory diagram we can easily see why this has to be the case, because in total we only work with one list. There is never a second list object. As I said before, there is no copy of the list. Okay, So we just have two different names for the same list. So in a way, 
uh, we can say that uh, this object has like a primary name and kind of a nickname, okay? We just have two ways of, to re of referencing the same list object. And that is an important idea, okay? So before that, um, we never had an object that had more than one reference. In this video, for the first time, we are dealing with objects that have more than one reference going to them. And this is what we, we have to understand, okay? And let me um, finish uh, this video with another discussion of an um, important concept. So um, here in the list uh, data structure here, what we see is the following. After I created the list in the beginning, I had an initial set of references inside them, the first three references, okay? And then later on, after the uh, list has already been created, we changed part of the list, okay? So I have a, a list object and I changed a part of it. I didn't change the entire list. I did not create a new list. I only changed the very first slot, the reference in the very first slot here. And all data types in Python, but also in other programming languages that allow that, that allow that after they have been created, they can still be changed. So the ones and zeros inside this box here can still be changed after we created it. We call these uh, data types mutable. Okay, so let's maybe write it right here the word mutable. And data types that cannot be changed after they are created, for example, the 99 here, but also the 3 and also the 2, they are what we would call immutable. Okay, so uh, in other words, as we saw in a previous video, um, when we, um, for example, take two numbers and add them, we will always get a new object back, okay? So the, the ones and zeros inside an object of type integer are never going to change. Once the object is created, they will never change. However, for a list data type, this is possible. Okay, so after we change, uh, after we created it, we can still change the ones and zeros inside them. And that is a big, distinct, uh, a big idea, all right? Also, so this is a concept that will apply also for other data types. And in this video lecture, uh, in, in, or in this course, we will um, discuss all the uh, common data types that exist in Python. And one dimension along which we are going to classify them is going to be whether or not they are mutable or not. And uh, right now, I'm not going to into detail of uh, what the advantages and disadvantages are. For now, let's just um, understand this idea that mutability exists. And then in a future video, um, we will learn what are the pros and cons of using mutable versus immutable data types. Okay, so I see you soon.